Welcome to Lecture 7. If you recall last lecture, we derived a differential equation that was for a mechanical element. It was our phenomenological model of viscoelasticity, our Maxwell element. It was comprised of a Hookean spring and a viscous damper in series, and we saw that we were able to model a feature of viscoelasticity with it, that of stress memory. What it failed to do, however, was to describe shear thinning in steady shear, which is a problem we're going to look at in future lectures. The model that we derived was differential in form. It was a differential equation. And when you look at it, it was implicit in stress. Now, a lot of the ways in which we can add in physics to this model, so we can model real materials and we can solve the problem of how to get a shear thinning response for this model, involves adding elements that are involved with strain or with strain rate. And really, we need an expression that is explicit in stress in order to do this easily. And so what we're going to do this lecture is look at how we start to get an expression for the Maxwell equation that is explicit in stress. We're going to move from a differential form to an integral form, and we're going to examine how that integral form performs in terms of mechanical response. Now, since at the moment we're not adding in any extra additional physics, you would expect the integral form that we derive to perform identically to the differential form. If it doesn't, there's been an error. What we'll see when we do this is we have to be especially careful about what we mean by time. More on this later. So, let's start by reminding ourselves what the differential form of Maxwell looks like. So here on the blackboard, we have the differential equation for a single Maxwell element. d tau by dt, the rate of change of stress with respect to time, is equal to tau over lambda. Remember, lambda is a relaxation time. It's the characteristic time scale that stress will relax in our viscoelastic system. Is equal to g gamma dot, which I've written as d gamma by dt, but of course that notation is interchangeable. Now, the colours I've applied there are going to be continued through my working on the blackboard because I want them to illustrate a point. Now, to convert differential Maxwell to an integral form, we're going to do a couple of manipulations. We're going to convert this differential equation to the form I've now written on the blackboard, where on the left-hand side you have the differential of a product of terms. In order to achieve this, I've multiplied through by an integrating factor. Now, if you remember integrating factors, they're one way in which you can solve differential equations. The integrating factor I've chosen is e to the minus t over lambda, where t is a time. But this is where we have to be very, very careful. Now, if we just think about care for the time being, let's think physically what this equation is stating. On the left-hand side, we have the time differential of that product of terms. And if we look at that product of terms and we see if we do the chain rule on that, we end up with what we see on the first line just multiplied through by that integrating factor. So on the left hand side, we have a product of terms, which I want to be able to evaluate stress now at. What my state of stress is at the current time, following some arbitrary deformation history. So the left-hand side is all about working out what the state of stress now is. On the right-hand side, I need to have some measure of the history of the material. And gamma dot of t there in green is all the history of deformation that the material has undergone. And so if we think about this, what we have are two timescales. We have a timescale which is a constant which is now, which is current time. I want to work out what the stress now is. However, the stress now at current time is a consequence of everything that's happened historically to this polymer system. And so we have a variable, which is in effect something that we call past time. Past time stretches from the dim and distant past, the dawn of time, if you like, through to current time now. So, past time is a continuum, current time is a constant. So if we think of that in context of the differential equation we've got, on the left-hand side, we want to know stress at current time. 
at a constant time, now. On the right hand side, we see that the stress is a result, a consequence of the defamation history over a continuum of times, over all history, over all past time, a variable. So we introduce some notation now. Our variable parameter, past time, is t dashed. This is our continuum. Past time stretches from now, current time, which we're going to call t, through back to minus infinity, the dawn of time. So when we integrate this particular expression, we have to be very careful about which time we use where. Strictly speaking, I should have written the right hand side of this equation with respect now to past time, because that is a time that I'm integrating over from t dashed equals minus infinity, the dawn of time, through to t dashed equals t, current time now. And so here we have a key result, which is my stress now, tau of t, is an integral over all past time, t dashed, from minus infinity to now, t, of an integral of terms that we see, which is a rearrangement involving my spring modulus g, involving an exponential, involving a difference in times, past time and current time, and my relaxation time lambda, and of course, my deformation rate gamma dot, which happens as a function of past time. So there we have integral Maxwell with respect to past strain rate. Now, hopefully, this should give us exactly the same predictions as differential Maxwell, only it should be a little bit easier to get those predictions because now we have stress explicitly written. So, if we examine steady shear again, we know we should be getting the prediction of a Newtonian viscosity. Let's see if we do. So on the graph on the board, I have my deformation rate gamma dot, which is a steady state over all past time, gamma dot subscript SS. And I have my stress because the deformation rate has been going on for long enough now for my stress to be constant. The blue arrow there represents past time equals current time, i.e. now. And what I'm going to do is set up this equation, this integral, to solve for stress now at current time. So stress now at current time, tau of t, is the integral of my g e to the minus t minus t dashed over lambda. My deformation rate is constant, so that becomes gamma dot ss is not a function of t. That's nice, so that can come outside the integral. All integrated with respect to past time, t dashed. So if we perform this integration, if we apply the limits, we see we do indeed get the prediction of Newtonian viscosity. So tau now, the stress at current time, is equal to eta times gamma dot. So there we have it. Gamma dot zero and gamma dot ss here are interchangeable. So we have a Newtonian viscosity in steady shear, which is exactly what we hoped we would get. We recognise that this is in effect wrong, but we'll correct that later because now we have stress written explicitly, it's easier to make the correction that we need to. That's in lecture eight though. The other deformation we examined for the differential equation was what happens to the stress once you stop that steady shear rate. If we assume that the stress has reached a nice constant value with respect to past time, denoted by the orange dotted line on the blackboard, then what happens once that deformation stops? So we saw last lecture that we expect an exponential decay, which is governed by the relaxation time. Let's see if we get the same result now. When you use integral Maxwell, what you do is you integrate over all the periods where the deformation rate is the same. So to illustrate this, I'm going to call period one the gap between t dashed equals minus infinity to t dashed equals zero. And then period two, the space between t dashed equals zero, when I stop the deformation, to now, to current time. And I'm going to simply use the Maxwell integral in both 1 and 2. And we can see that in 1, gamma dot is my gamma dot steady state, gamma dot ss or gamma dot 0. 
and in two gamma dot is zero so strictly speaking i don't need to evaluate period two because it's pre-multiplied by a strain rate a deformation rate that is zero but i've written it there to prove the point of how you would write the integral if the deformation wasn't zero so take a close look at the integral limits in period one we have t dash going from minus infinity the dawn of time to t dash equals zero which is when my deformation changes from gamma dot ss to zero my second integral has limits between t dash equals zero when that period of deformation history starts to now current time t dash equals t because that's the time i'm interested in however we ignore that second integral and we just look at the first integral and in the first integral if we look in the exponential current time features in that exponential so let's integrate and we end up with the result that my stress now at current time t is the exponential decay that we expect governed by the relaxation time which is exactly the same as what we obtained with our differential form of Maxwell so let's recap a few key points what we've done is to convert differential Maxwell to an integral form with respect to strain rate what we saw now is that we have two measures of time we have past time this is a continuum this is what we use to define what my deformation history has been the deformation history happens from the dawn of time t dash equals minus infinity through to that second time scale which we're calling current time that's now that's constant and we denote it with the symbol t now in doing all this we haven't defined any new physics and we would therefore expect the deformation responses to be identical to the differential form and that is exactly what we've seen